What's going on, guys? Shu here, bringing you another review slash reaction on a fairy tale one in here quest. And I gotta say, this chapter felt really short uh, in the sense that we didn't really get all that much. We did get some closures on some other battles, which was good. I enjoyed it, but it was predictable. Uh, we start off with our boy Gray, who had to take on Loxus's minions or subordinates, whatever you want to call his closest at people. And first, we see him taken down. With really no effort, Greed, who I mean, uh, Freed, who also uses Demon Slayer magic or a demon magic, and he stands no chance against Gray. Like this dude just goes down relatively easy, with no real struggle for Gray. And I gotta say, I was a little more impressed with Gray than I have been usually. It almost feels like Gray has developed his own little version of Ultra Instinct, because this man literally teleported almost instantaneously to take down both ever and big slow with really no effort and it was crazy how they were thinking you know how is this even possible he can beat us it's like does he not feel pain and then we kind of hear gray's remark by saying you know how do i not feel pain when i have to take down my own kind you know and that's it is pretty tough for gray you know for anyone that you have to face against you know your own people and it, you know it's just a very uncomfortable situation uh, but then we get to what I thought was probably maybe the most interesting part of this chapter. And it was a continuation between Salamander, aka Natsu, and Gajio. These two are still squaring off. They want the other to fall. They're at their wit's end. And it seems as though one or the other is really is just a punch away that, to have the other seal the victory. Uh, Gajio doesn't want to lose to him. Uh, Natsu is like, I gotta beat him, just fall already, dang it, I still gotta fight Mira Jane and all the others, like, th there's still so much I gotta do, you know, I need you to go down, and right when Natsu is gonna continue on the battle, we have none other than Le uh, Levy stepping in and, like, interfering with the battle, she even says, I'm here to protect you, and it's crazy to think that they're still under the white mage's control, and their feelings for the each other are still very much there and I, you know i gotta give a lot of you know uh, applause for both of them to still have these feelings for each other despite you know the whole commotion and it's almost like they honestly haven't changed other than the fact that they're just brainwashed and seeing them as the enemy or seeing like natsu and his gang as the enemy but honestly you know it's crazy to think that you know levy goes out of her way to put herself in danger and Natsu almost legitimately does not care. He's going to take her down. And then he remembers the conversation that confirms what we all knew. Like everyone knew this. But for those that may not have been uh, paying attention. Those of you in the back row. We finally hear the confirmation that Levi is a go is going to be a mother. And Gajil is going to be a father. They're going to be parents. It's crazy to think about that these two are the first to become parents in this series. And of course, we know this has been lingering on for so long that now we get to see that she actually is, you know, going to be the first mom out of the whole series. And, you know, this is probably the most probably recognizable couple right here. Everyone wants, you know, Lucy and Natsu together and Jalal and Urza. But this is the one. This is the one that's confirmed by the man himself and so we gotta have to just kind of stick with it and so we have uh, Natsu pulling back his punch and then uh, Levy just kind of taking advantage of that and taking him down and him escaping uh, but we see that they were at each other's ends you know there was no way the other one Gajio felt like he lost but we have Levy just kind of giving giving him props and towards the end, we get to see Jalal also still faring, you know, squaring off against Urza and him just trying to get close to her. I'm thinking, is he, you know, honestly trying to get close to her because he loves her? And that we know that she, he does, but is it just that or is it the spell? Who knows? We only got a glimpse of that. And then towards the end of the chapter, we finally get what Wendy's up to. She goes back to this church. And she sees other members of fairy tale stuck in like a what looks to be like a web or whatnot or some sticky substance. And this monster is there or this creature is like, ah, oh, my next prey is here. 
So it's someone we've never seen before. I don't know who it could be. It looks to be interesting. I hope we get a fight with Wendy now. I'm looking forward to it. But guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, stay safe, take care of yourselves and others, and I'll catch you later.